All over America, battered mothers are losing custody of their children when they file for divorce. I naively thought that, you know, if somebody molests their kid, I thought they'd just go to jail. Even with a proven record, abusers are winning joint and sole custody. To win custody of the kids over and against the mother's will is the ultimate victory, short of killing the kids. I was just snatched up from my normal life, and all that anyone would tell me was that my mom was crazy and that she was going into the mental hospital. In a case where the, those children have been abused or the mom has been abused, what's really best for children is for their safety to be made the top priority and for their healing. A third of the women in the U.S. will be victims of domestic violence. It will have devastating effects on their children. I know that there are organizations who are out there and advocates who are supporting each other. I'm more action oriented and I can't settle down and it's the only way I think that I can even find healing. Um, even though you can't be healed until you're on the other side of the fence, it's a way of keeping me going, is doing something. And, Mothers um, are never prepared for their children to disclose sexual abuse. And when my children disclosed, I didn't want to believe it, um, and, but I didn't know what to do either. And I was in the midst of a divorce, um, and the children had only that one week begun to see their father alone um, when we had separated, and that's when they came home, and one of them was in serious pain, and she was quite inflamed in her vaginal area. And so when you start going through the battles, it's number one, you don't know what to do. I turned to my attorney, and I was given very, very bad advice. Um, I turned to the courts through my attorney, and I found that the more my children disclosed, the more the court didn't want to believe that my children had been abused. They believed um, the, their father instead. And they took the children away from me totally. It's been four years and three months since I've even seen my children. There is always the dilemma as to whether this is an ad child abuse is an actual event as being reported by the mother. So on the one hand, if the mother allows it, she, they'll say, well, she is a neglectful mother and take the child away because you neglected to protect. And on the other hand, all too often, the mother says, especially after a divorce, a separation or a divorce, where the mother is now able to see things that she didn't realize that were going on, like child sexual abuse, on behalf of the uh, uh, perpetrated by the ex-husband. Now she's able to see these symptoms. Well, um, well clearly my um, daughter um, has been abused, and it's all documented, and she wrote a lot of letters to the judge uh, by herself. And that abuse, and the judge, um, actually that made the judge very upset, and the judge thought that uh, my daughter uh, directly challenged him. So he um, gave, not only gave the uh, sole custody to my ex-husband, also um, put me back to, to um, supervise the visitation four hours every other, um, once a month. And after that, I just collapsed, and I just um, couldn't hold together, even though, even though I know it, I have all the truth, and uh, but just too overwhelmed. My sister has been extremely, extremely heartbroken over this matter. Uh, the fact that she's been taken away from her family. She's always been there to see the conflict between between my parents. She's always been there to see the abuse that my father has has really subjected um, his family to. So she's always been there first-handedly seeing what's going on. It's tragic, I'd say, that she is forced to go live with the same person she suffered at the hands of. I told my daughter that she was gonna stay with dad and only come back in a weekend to see mom and uh, her brother, and she was just devastated. And she also, at that point, revealed to her 
um, therapist that her father um, molested her for probably four or five years. Um, he been tug her um, every night, and um, and she said that's when did that happen for all these years. So um, I called CPS, and the therapist of my daughter called CPS. I filed a report to the police department. Um, then my um, then we filed a reconsideration uh, with this new evidence. That if he is in fact molesting her, and she's having all this upset, and she's pulling out of her eyebrows, and she doesn't know what to do because she's lived with him in the past and has seen his violence, that when he tells her he's going to be getting custody of her, she finally reveals what he has been doing to her. And the response to that is for her to be given to him and completely separated from her mother, completely, birthday, Christmas, no contact whatsoever, to be isolated from her brother, and, and, and his motivation is clear. He has got to keep her quiet, and that's what this is all about. There is no change of circumstances presented in the current motion. In effect, this is a second bite of the apple. Commissioner basically said uh, the sexual abuse allegation is suspicious because the time-wise, and why didn't the child uh, review this before? The motion is denied. There are quite a number of cases in which a, a battering man also sexually abuses children. There's a high overlap between domestic violence perpetration and incest perpetration, statistically speaking. And uh, I have really, I've seen the anguish of mothers whose children are being sexually abused and where the court refused to permit her to protect her children. They said that I wasn't um, pushing her out of the car. Basically, they said that I should just bodily take her out of the car and drive away. And at that point, they got it in motion to start this parental alienation syndrome that they charged me with. Parental alienation syndrome is a theory that was invented by a man named Richard Gardner. He said there is a syndrome called parental alienation whereby the custodial parent, who is usually the mother, is trying to alienate the children from the father. And she's doing it by raising these false abuse allegations. If you have a child who is reluctant or refuses to visit a parent or who makes complaints that the other parent is abusing them and refuses to go to visitation, the cause of that is the mother doing things to sabotage the relationship with the father. Gardner's research has been thoroughly debunked by the American Psychological Association and every other scientific, credible scientific expert that has looked at his work has said that there's no scientific validity to it. But they have acknowledged that nonetheless the courts are interpreting the facts in front of them in this light. And so if a mother comes into custody court and says, the father battered me and is putting the children at risk or has even abused the children. The immediate response is, she's alienating. This is called parental alienation, Your Honor. She's just trying to alienate the children from the father. This is what mothers do. What we know statistically is that several studies have found that 75% of contested custody cases, 75% of those cases have a history of domestic violence. What that tells you is, if you're a judge and you're sitting on a contested custody docket, don't be surprised when abuse is brought up. There are dozens and dozens who will all agree with me that this junk science called parental alienation syndrome has been responsible for so much harm. And, and, and yet I am aware every day of judges basing decisions on this and, 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 and psychologists using this as knowledge and re making recommendations to judges because of this junk science. And it is appalling and responsible for so much harm. Well, um, well, our grandmother believed me, but, um, well, the rest of the world thought he was just this very respectable, perfect person who was this big lawyer, and he was in the, um, in all of the, in this club, and he was, he went to church every week and everything, and to everybody else thought he was this perfect person with a perfect family that was really um, nice and he was nice to his family and everything. Much more often than not, an abuser is someone who comes off well 
when he's talking to people outside the family. He knows how to present himself as a calm, reasonable person. Often he's actually quite skilled at presenting himself as a victim of an unreasonable or vindictive or hysterical woman. My daughter called me the first night after she went to her father's house. She talked to me five times on her cell phone. See ya. Right now. Nadia, sweetie, give me some time, okay? Give me some time. I need some time to have a look. Today, not just today, okay? Are you standing here on anything? No, it's not getting out today. Okay, Mania, hang on there. Thank you. 